As we just heard, the problem of fentanyl coming, fentanyl coming across the southern U.S. border is pervasive. We should point out most of it is done by U.S. citizens at points of entry. Uh, Americans driving their cars legally into the United States and not disclosing, obviously, all the illegal drugs in their trunk. What can be done about it? Jake, thank you for having me. You know, I represent 42 percent of the southern border, 823 miles, and we're at war. And, and I've seen it firsthand. You know, to, right now, I mean, let this sink in. Drug cartels just killed two Americans in broad daylight. This is what terrorism looks like. I've got a bill, the Security First Act, that labels cartels as terrorists. It's time we do that. I'd also say all Americans should be in, in support of keeping these bad actors out and making sure our things are safe. At the same breath, all Americans should be in support of finding a uh, immigration reform op option that, that focuses on legal immigration. I think this is something that, that we, can, we can solve. It starts in Congress. We need, we need the White House's help. The reality is on the border, it is pure hell. I want to get to the immigration reform uh, aspect of this in a second, but w to, to talk about right now, the, the two Americans uh, who were kidnapped in Mexico that are now sadly dead, there was also a Mexican national, a 22-year-old mom, uh, who was also killed in the crossfire. The other two Americans have been returned to the U.S. This does appear, this doesn't make it any better, but this does appear to be a case of mistaken identity. They were confused by the cartels to be competing drug smugglers from Haiti. Um, how dangerous is it for U.S. citizens to visit Mexico, especially areas like this. You know, the tough, the tough part, uh, Jake, I represent a lot of communities along the border, like El Paso, that is a, a, a sister city with Juarez, Eagle Pass, it's a sister city with Piedras Negras. And in many cases, it is safe. In many cases, you have U.S. citizens traveling back and forth on a regular basis because ultimately they are one community. But at the end of the day, this, is, this uh, border crisis is spreading. I was just uh, in Uvalde. You know what happened in Uvalde 10 months ago, just about 10 months ago. I was speaking with a very prominent figure. I won't say his name, but he told me a story on Saturday. He, would, he had his granddaughter over for the weekend, and his wife was bathing her in, in the bathtub. And, and someone broke in, an illegal alien broke into their bathtub. He held him at gunpoint until the, the authorities were able to arrive. What I'm getting at is things are getting more and more dangerous. It, it is safe in some places, but many people along the border do not feel safe. we got to stop with the rhetoric, and we got to have tangible solutions that keeps people safe, the bad actors out, and also welcomes those that want to come and work and live the American dream. We can accomplish that if we work in a bipartisan manner. The Americans who went into Mexico did so for medical procedures. What advice would you give American citizens who are considering doing the same thing for this medical tourism? I mean, the, the reality is Americans, because of the cost of health care, are, are having to travel into Mexico every single day. Veterans are having to do that. So this is an area where, you know, if folks are going to travel, they need to be safe about it. They need to make sure that they know where they're going. But once again, uh, not everywhere is a war zone, but in some cases, it is absolutely hell. The fentanyl that is killing our kids, we have to push back against that. I'd say, you know, a, a lot of times there's more to the story. Go to our website, TonyGonzalezForCongress.com, and learn more. More about what's happening on the border. So, Congressman, obviously the bipartisan immigration reform you're talking about is an important component about this. The immigration system is broken. Um, how do you get Republicans in the House who control the House to work with Democrats so that they can be there can be a bipartisan compromise bill that the Senate, which is controlled by Democrats, will pass and, and the president, who's a Democrat, will sign. How, how do you do that? There doesn't seem to be a lot of incentive right now for House Republicans to work across the aisle. Look, politically, you take a lot of risk, but you have to be bold and you need leadership. I host on Monday, I hosted my 16th congressional delegation at the border. We went to Uvalde, we went to Eagle Pass. We, we listened to Republicans and Democrats, both border security and immigration reform, over 100 members of Congress. So that's what I'm doing in the House. I also work in a bipartisan manner there. I've also had discussions with senators, uh, Republican and Democrat senators. I've also had very high level discussions with the White House. So to your point, there is an opportunity opportunity here, Jake, where we can come with a solution that both solves the border and also uh, welcomes those that want to come through and, and have work visas and others. Nobody wants to put their, their political uh, life on the line, if you will, but this is an important topic. You mentioned earlier fentanyl is killing our kids, yeah. not Democrat kids, our kids, period. Right. But I mean, just you know this as well as I do. Uh, the Republican Party of Texas voted on Saturday to censure you for even though you're a very reliable conservative vote, you don't always vote along party lines. 
Uh, practically, that decision, that censure means they're not going to financial support, financially support you in the next primary. I mean, how can there be any incentive for there to be bipartisan work if the Republican Party of Texas is is censuring somebody who is as conservative as you are, who just every now and then votes in a different way? Uh, Jake, the reality is they've never given me financial support. You've got to kind of build it out your own way. But going back to Uvalde, there were 21 innocent people that were killed. 19 of them were babies. And so I'm proud of the, my vote for the Safer's Community Act. If it was today, I would vote on it again the exact same way. I think there's a way for us to, to be conservative in our values and our principles. I mean, I'll give you an example. Right now, I have six children. My children, my younger children, they go to school with a bulletproof backpack. My oldest son, who's 18 years old in college, he not only does he have a bulletproof backpack, he carries a Glock around. This is the world that we live in. I don't want my children growing up in this. I don't think anyone does. So we have to find real, tangible solutions that do not infringe upon the Constitution. I think we can accomplish that if people are bold and willing to stand up. I've always done that my whole life, spent 20 years in the military. This is no different.